Hi, and welcome to our ORX webinar panel discussion. Today we'll be focusing on pandemic scenarios and we have brought together a group of scenario experts from ORX to discuss the topic. However, before I introduce the panel, I'll introduce myself, ORX and the ORX Scenario Service. My name is Steve Bishop. At ORX, I lead our risk information services and research, which includes our ORX Scenario Service. ORX is the largest operational risk association in the financial services sector. We're committed to improving the management and measurement of operational risk, and we do this through a combination of research, sharing of information, ideas, and experience. As a, an ever-expanding global community of operational risk professionals that shares knowledge, expertise, and experience comes together to help progress this work. We're owned and managed by over 100 financial firms from all over the world, and we're a not-for-profit organisation. ORX Scenarios is one of our premium services, which means it's open to all organisations to, to subscribe to, not just ORX members. Within ORX Scenarios, we have an industry-leading scenario library containing over a thousand scenarios from the leading financial services firms globally. We undertake practice benchmarks on uh, practices within scenario management. We have a global scenario practitioner network, which includes free invitation only events and our regular working groups. We have scenario development handbooks or guides, which are a roadmap for creating and quantifying scenarios for specific risks such as cyber and pandemic. We also produce risk intelligence packs. These are ready-made packs of external information that support you with your scenario development. Okay, so on the panel today, in addition to myself, uh, we're joined by uh, Giuseppe Aloy, who leads our scenario service. Good morning, everyone. Thanks, Steve. Lily Lumregan, who also works in ORX scenarios and leads the development of our scenario guides, or handbooks as we call them. Hi, everyone. Uh, and we also have Sarah Reed, who leads our stress testing program and has extensive experience in developing operational risk scenarios. Hi, everybody. Thank you. Okay, so before we start today's discussion with the panel, uh, I want to take some look, a look at some work we've been undertaking uh, on, on top risks in the, in the industry. Uh, the slide that you can see shows the, the top risks that we had uh, reported by our members at, at the start of 2020. The chart on the slide is an extract from our 2020 ORX Operational Risk Horizon Study. This is an annual study that allows us to take the temperature of the financial services industry exploring the top and emerging risks that our members are facing and are managing at that time. As you can see on the slide, uh, in the 2020 results, pandemic doesn't really feature. So I'm gonna turn now to the panel. Uh, Sarah, if it's okay, um, do, does it surprise you uh, that only one organization taking part in this study listed pandemic among their top risks? I'm not really surprised to see that pandemic isn't specifically identified on this list. However, several of the top risks that we do see here have a higher chance of materializing due to this event occurring, such as business continuity, people risk, or transaction related risks. This is also unsurprisingly didn't featuring in our taxonomy work last year, but you can expect to see it in this year's cause and impact taxonomy. Th thanks, Sarah. Um, for those that, that don't know, uh, the ORX reference taxonomy was, was published in late 2019 uh, and was based on uh, 60 taxonomies collected from our, from our members. Um, so, so, it's, so again, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not a surprise that pandemic wasn't included in the event types, but I believe Sarah is absolutely right that we'll see it feature in the, the causal uh, reference taxonomy that we will be developing uh, this year. Okay, so... I'm going to move on and talk a little bit more about scenarios now. Um, as part of the ORX Scenarios service, the 50 plus banking and insurance subscribers share their scenarios annually. This creates a database that we call the ORX Scenario Library. If we look at this library and the results from last year, we can see that pandemic is there. However, it was only reported by a very small number of subscribers. Giuseppe, did you have views on why you think this is? Yes, Steve. Um, I believe that this can be explained by uh, two main two main things, two main factors. Uh, first of all, we need to consider that uh, the scenario library contains only the uh, most material scenarios developed 
developed by subscribers. And those scenarios are mostly used to feed uh, capital, mo capital models. Uh, therefore, you, uh, you can imagine how that pandemic-related uh, scenarios um, are not uh, amongst the most material for uh, most of the financial institutions, but only in a handful of them. And the, sec the, second, uh, the second factor that uh, um, can, can also explain this, and it's something that we also notice in the uh, Senior Library Editorial Report, uh, Insight into Material Risk, is that uh, big uh, external events that make the news do influence the creation of scenarios. So to give an, an example, in 2019, we did see a lot of anti-money laundering scenarios created after some huge fine from the European regulator. Um, Sarah, given your, your experience, what are your observations on this? Well, the original intent of the scenario analysis program was really to explore the far-fetched, worst-case scenarios of events that could possibly happen. But more recently, the culture has shifted so that scenarios don't necessarily push the boundaries, but instead they focus more on current events or hot topics. I think this pandemic may change how we approach this process again, and we might see a return to the forward-looking event rather than the flavor of the day. Mm. And thinking about the, the overall sphere of risks that organisations are exposed to, I guess. Yes, correct. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that. And uh, turning to, to, to Lily, given what we've heard from uh, Giuseppe and Sarah, do we have plans to do anything different with our scenario library exercise in 2020? Yeah, Steve, uh, we do. So this year in our scenario service, we will be looking to broaden the scope of the scenarios that we capture within our library. Um, to address some of the, the observations and comments that uh, Sarah and Giuseppe have both made. So essentially, um, that means beyond capturing the most material risks from our, uh, the institutions that subscribe to the service, um, we are looking to additionally capture a broader range of operational risks that are faced by the financial industry. Uh, as an example of those, we're going to look to capture pandemic scenarios, uh, model risk scenarios, and resilience-related scenarios uh, where, these uh, where these are available. Uh, this is in addition to capturing the most material risks. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Okay, so um, we're now going to turn to look at some of the work we've undertaken in response to the to the coronavirus outbreak. Um, we've we've quickly adjusted our, our program of activity this year to develop on focusing a, a guide or a handbook that supports our subscribers to review and enhance their pandemic scenarios. Um, to help us develop this guide, we've extensively consulted with our, our subscribers um, who, who come from the leading financial services institution across the globe. Uh, and we've begun to look at the type of descriptions that you may need to consider for your, for your scenario. Our discussions to date have highlighted four key elements that need to be considered. So the first one is, is control failures, and by that we mean, for example, how well organizations manage to execute their business continuity plans or, or how robust those business continuity plans are. Um, firm specific actions, so, so how they're able to adapt to a new working environment, the type of business they're in and how easy that is to adapt, for example. Um, the, th the third area is, is, is government measures. Um, as, as we've seen, there have been extension, extensive and ranging practices in terms of the types of lockdowns, travel restrictions, implications for, for, for businesses, etc. Uh, and the, the fourth area, which probably speaks for itself, really, is, is, is the sort of third party and, and supply chain implications and, and the management of those through, through, through a pandemic. So now I've outlined those. T turning to you, Sarah, um, would you agree that these elements uh, should be the key focus for a scenario narrative? Oh, thanks, Steve. Yes, I think going down the list we see here, controls will feature somewhat, but I think we'll be discussing that a little bit later. Firm specific actions are going to need to consider the firm type, the regions, the businesses they're engaged in in order to understand what type of recovery or BCD is in place. Government measures are going to be so fluid right now, partially depending on the firm type and region, but much of this could also come in as a factor in the aftermath. Um, third parties is big focus, specific to each firm's vendor base, where they are, where they're handling this situation. Many moving parts are here for us to consider. Thanks, Sarah. 
Um, Lily, it would be interesting um, to understand more about what we mean by control failures and government actions. Are, are you able to mention some of the examples that, that were provided by our subscribers in the discussions? Sure, Steve. Um, so starting with the government measures. So the government measures referred to in the scenarios are not necessarily uh, measures against the firms, but more in general, uh, anything that in, can inf have an influence on the office branches and employees um, and the business operations. So many of the government measures uh, usually do come after. However, some of them can indirectly influence the immediate situation of the event. So for example, um, the level and length of lockdowns that governments impose and other restrictions, which can also vary very differently uh, between countries as we're, we're seeing now, which needs to, to be taken into consideration. Um, in addition, another example of the, the government measures could be related to public transport, um, where the transport is stopped or there may be reduced services, which will also have an impact. Um, this is because the government actions influence the economic environment and wider society and therefore will inevitably uh, have an impact on the firm itself. And turning to the control failures, uh, so whilst it is true that the pandemic is an external event which firms cannot mitigate or uh, there aren't any controls really to, to stop the, the event, uh, there are some types of failures which can make this pandemic worse. So in the discussions that we held within our scenario communities, uh, some of the firms shared that they do consider other failures to make the scenario more severe. So the examples um, that I can provide on that are linked to the business continuity plans. Uh, so one, one particular example is audit issues linked to the business continuity plans that haven't been followed up or actioned uh, can make the event worse or if the business continuity plans are not triggered fast enough um, in response to the event. So there are two, two examples of how control failures may be uh, considered in this type of scenario. Great, thank you. Um, turning to you, uh, Giuseppe. Um, so we've got these, these four elements that, that we think make up the, the scenario description. Um, if you're uh, an organisation, how, how do you uh, determine the narrative specific to you? What, what have we learned um, from, from our discussions in that regard? So as uh, uh, Sarah and Lily uh, said, the, the description is a fundamental piece of the, the scenario itself because it facilitates the workshop discussion and, and provide participants, workshop participants, the context of uh, the context of, um, of the scenario itself. Therefore, the narrative uh, needs to, to fit with, with the firm to fit with the internal environment and external environment. And this means the regulatory environment where the firm operate, but also the social context uh, of the firm itself. In, on top of that, uh, the, uh, the description itself, uh, the scenario description also, also drive and, and influence the identification of the, the key impact of the, of, of, of the scenario. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, so if we then think about the next stage of, of developing a, a pandemic scenario, um, we need to start thinking about the, the impacts that need to be quantified, potentially the, the, the other impacts that need to be brought into consideration, as well as the, the risk drivers that determine the size of, of, of the impact that you may need to, to quantify. Lily, what, what are we seeing as the main direct inputs that we would need to think about? So uh, the, the main direct inputs that we can think about in this type of scenario are unplanned IT investment, HR costs, sanitization costs and legal costs. Um, I'll just provide a bit more detail around each of those. So for unplanned IT investment, uh, this includes costs incurred in supporting the majority of the workforce to move to working from home. Um, and importantly, these are costs that were unplanned. Um, so examples of that can be IT equipment, so there may be an increased spend on monitors and laptops um, and so on. Or there's also costs um, in, potentially costs involved in increasing network capacity. Um, to, to support the remote working. 
In terms of the HR costs, um, this could involve things like an increase in sick pay or other benefits that need to be uh, paid out to employees for various reasons linked to the uh, pandemic event. And also um, within HR, we can see training and hiring of temporary staff to support operations. Um, so for example, for call centers and uh, customer service type roles that may have an increased demand um, at, during the event. Cleaning costs um, or sanitization costs will be incurred, will potentially be incurred for um, deep cleaning of offices and branches if that is necessary. Um, and the final direct um, key direct impact that we have is legal costs. So this uh, will likely depend on the scenario storyline that is um, developed. However, an example can be that if firms fail to take adequate actions um, to ensure safety of employees and customers during the event, they may be liable for, for legal costs. Um, so what came out of our um, scenario discussions that we held is aligned with the guidance from our OOX working group, which help us set the industry reporting standards for operational risk. So we published some um, initial guidance on our website on how to capture the losses linked to the coronavirus pandemic. Um, we will be updating this guidance with more information later in the year. And in addition to um, this guidance, once ORX has captured the losses in our uh, external loss database from our members, we will be analysing the impact that the event, uh, the coronavirus event has had on the industry. Okay, great. That gives us a really useful understanding. Thank you. Uh, in our wider discussions with ORX members, we've had reports as well of, of, of additional risks that they're beginning to, to notice in relation to the pandemic and, and, and changes in the, in the risk profile. Uh, and we're calling the, these other or, or secondary impacts of, of the pandemic. Giuseppe, in terms of these sort of wider impacts and secondary risk factors, what, what, what may need to be considered uh, in developing a pandemic scenario? That's, uh, that's a very interesting point because uh, um, a good number of our uh, subscribers did point out that uh, the the highest part of the severity might be driven by other impacts rather than direct impact itself. In any case, they mentioned three main uh, secondary impacts that can be uh, triggered by a pandemic event. Uh, processing errors uh, is one of those because in, in a stressed environment, employee, employees might uh, tend to uh, do some uh, more, more mistakes and, and therefore uh, uh, committing more, uh, more errors, so more processing errors. Uh, cyber uh, and uh, IT fraud is uh, is uh, definitely um, another impact that, that should be considered. Indeed, um, uh, again, it was commented uh, like the that phishing campaign can be more successful when in, during emergency situations. So, for example. Uh, if an employee or even a, even a customer is receiving um, an, an email with coronavirus in it, they most probably, uh, there is higher chance that they, they click on the button because, uh, because of the emergency situation. And uh, the last secondary impact is definitely uh, conduct. Um, this, uh, needs to be intended uh, in the way that the regulator may decide to take some action after the event. So, for example, uh, if the, the firm is uh, miscommunicating uh, with, with customer regarding uh, some initiatives, for, so for example, uh, mortgage holidays, uh, then the regulator may decide to, to, find, to find the firm afterward. Okay, thank you. And, and, and follow up question, are we seeing a difference in, a, in approach to the way that our members are, are quantifying these, these impacts? Yes, um, yes, because uh, as uh, Sarah said, uh, when we uh, had a chat on the, on the narrative, uh, we, um, the, the core business of the of the firm does influence the uh, the way 
impact are uh, are calculated also or even identified so we did have a separate separate conversation with uh, uh, separate uh, line of business uh, representatives so uh, i can tell that for retail banking uh, the call center cost might uh, might be actually a um, a, a, big, a big chunk of the total severity because uh, with branches that are closed uh, they are expecting customer to to use more the call center while for investment banking to give you another example uh, the execution of orders uh, at, at a non favorable favorable price might be um, another cause of, of impact and the last one is for insurance uh, insurers discuss secondary impact quite a lot and they identify that uh, being forced by the regulator to pay some claims that were previously excluded by the policy might, might cost them uh, a, a, a big amount of money Great, thanks, Giuseppe. I think that gives us a really good overview of the the impacts and and the different types of uh, business and the way they need to think about about those. I, I, do, I do have to say, though, I think irrespective of of the impacts that are identified, um, I'm guessing when you're developing a scenario, you need, we need to consider uh, a number of of risk drivers. And and what I mean by risk drivers really is the factors that are increasing or decreasing the size of the impacts that that an organization may need to quantify. And I'm going to turn to you, Sarah, if that's okay for this question. What, what do you see as the sort of key drivers that, that we, we, we should consider and that we're seeing being considered by our subscribers? Well, I think there's several risk drivers that are going to link to this uh, event. Duration and the contagion rate are going to drive the impacts to employee availability, especially in critical areas such as payments. That's going to lead to higher costs for overtime, surge capacity for staffing, protective equipment, all those sorts of things. Even IT drivers uh, to cover deficiencies that Lily had mentioned, you know, covering the hardware or VPN requirements, that's also going to come into play. Both of these can also be linked to third party, which on its own could be exacerbated by this event, but also in the staffing, consulting, IT support might also fall under this umbrella as well, and that's going to make it more challenging. Severity of government measures is another driver here for multinational companies especially because they're going to be seeing differing measures and levels region by region. This is actually something we're tackling in a pilot project and that's looking at factor driven quantification. So what we're doing is taking a tangled web such as pandemic and we're developing a structured approach to quantifying the impacts. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, I think that provides ho hopefully to, to the listeners a really good overview of the sorts of things that people need to think about. Um, so if we turn back to the, to, to the, to the slides, um, Gi Giuseppe, can you sort of summarize the, the key changes we're seeing here in relation to, to the development of pandemic scenarios? I, I would say that uh, uh, the, the current situation uh, is, uh, is telling us uh, two, 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 main, uh, two main things. The first is, is definitely rewriting the assumption for pandemic scenarios. We did have uh, a look at uh, pandemic scenarios so far developed by financial institutions and all of them in one word were not severe enough. A, the, the narrative was not, was not looking at uh, the all elements that we have discussed today and the and the estimation itself was uh, uh, was not severe so current situation is definitely rewriting the assumption that should take should be taken in consideration while developing pandemic scenario the other uh, the other aspect is definitely uh, putting the uh, scenario analysis and also the operational uh, uh, risk function uh, under the, the spotlight. We did uh, hear in our conversation with, with members how uh, a good practice, uh, a good scenario framework is uh, helping them in identify uh, the, the, the right action to, to mitigate the current situation and to allow the, the, the business not to be disrupted. So again, is a, is a good opportunity for scenarios. To be to be developed and to serve the business. 
Okay, great. Thank you. And turning to you, Sarah, what, what are your observations and thoughts uh, from a stress testing perspective? Well, the European Banking Authority canceled the EU stress testing exercise this year, and that was to allow European banks to focus on mitigation efforts during this event. However, the Federal Reserve is moving forward and they announced that it will be focusing on the severely adverse scenario submissions to uh, get an idea of how robust banks are going to be during this time. But even some of the variables, such as unemployment rates, are exceeding the Fed's severely adverse numbers, which the banks were being tested against. On an enterprise-wide level, everyone also might need to consider other impacts outside of operational risks, such as credit, market, liquidity, strategic impacts, even impacts against the GL, like revenue losses. This current situation is going to hit all of these targets. Yeah, no, I think it's going to hit the whole of businesses, and I think you're right, that holistic approach is, is, is necessary. Yes. Okay, um, I just want to say thank you really thank you to everyone for your for your time today uh, i hope you uh, as listeners found it useful and interesting um we're continuing to evolve and develop uh, the pandemic handbook that we've been talking about and, and, and undertaking that work with our subscribers um a version will be made available publicly and we're targeting that for around about the the end of may uh, in addition uh, we have lots of coronavirus resources freely available on the ORX website, including guidance on capturing related uh, loss events, uh, and also summaries of the discussions we've been having with our senior leaders in the ORX membership, um, covering key topics such as uh, the resilience response, the changes they're observing in the risk profile, uh, and plans for post-pandemic as, as, as well, and, and planning for the, for the new normal. Um, just visit orx.org to see what's available or I would encourage you to follow us on LinkedIn or Twitter for regular updates. Um, if you have any questions or if you want to get uh, in touch, please do so using the details that are in the slides. Once again, I'd like to say thank you to everyone, to our listeners and also to our panel today. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thanks, Steve, for the invitation. Thank you, Steve. Thanks. Thanks, Steve, and thanks, everyone, for listening.